Richards. Hi, Lizzie. Welcome to today's anatomy question. We are getting really excited about our upcoming anatomy course. I just booked the photographer, by the way. Yay! We're filming next year. And if you're interested, please go to experientialanatomy.yoga and you can sign up to make sure you get all of the future videos from this series and you'll get notified when the course launches in 2017. So um, Mary Richards is joining us. And today's topic is going to be about Virasana, but a small caveat, we're filming this in real time, just post-Trump election. So the question essentially is, can you talk to us about Virasana and the knees? But we were just talking before we hit record about the tie-in to current events. So what can you offer us, what can yoga offer us right now? So much. Because yoga, in its most fundamental sense, is about relationship. I mean, if we think about yoga, yug, it's a verb mm -hmm. to yoke. And that is about relationship. And so virasana, hero's pose, as it's sometimes referred to, is about the relationship uh, between the lower leg and the thigh, of course. Mm -hmm. But more than that, it's about our relationship with the present moment in so many ways. Mm -hmm. If you think about the symbolism of the knee joint, okay, okay, what do we do when we pray? Mm -hmm. We get down, we get down on our knees. Mm -hmm. So now some pessimists will say that the knees are the garbage dumps of the soul. What? Who says that? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I. this goes so bad. I'll never forget one of my first Iyengar teachers uh, saying that the junk from your psyche and your body and your relationship with self and with God, mm -hmm. all of that gets stored in your knees. And literally she said, the knees are the garbage dump of the soul. And I was like, I'm a little too optimistic for that an analogy. But so essentially you're saying that there's a kind of energetic theory that our knees are holding on to a lot for us. Yeah, that our knees are holding a lot onto a lot for us and that the knees also pre present a unique gateway mm -hmm. into our relationship with the cosmic self. Okay. Okay. Okay? I like that. And if we kind of think about the, now I get excited. <laughs> if we I'm sorry, you weren't if, excited before. <laughs> if we think about the anatomical structure of the knee. Yes. Which, uh, if we if we go back a couple of uh, today's anatomy questions to the knees in Warrior Two, and I was mm -hmm. talking about the knees being actually three joints. Wait, can you move it this way? Yeah, into the middle. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have the the medial mm -hmm. aspect of the knee, mm -hmm. the lateral mm -hmm. aspect of the knee, and then the relationship between the kneecap and the femur, the patellofemoral joint. Okay, just to make it super clear for people, can you show us, like, where's the foot, which direction is... is okay, so up here, this is this is toward the head, this okay. is proximal, okay. and this is distal. This, If we think of the base of this model, that's your foot. Okay, and it's facing the same direction as you're facing, this person? Correct, yeah. Standing. So it's an anatomical position. Okay. So if we think about the knee as three joint structures, well, there are three syllables in OM. Ooh. It's A-U-M, right? Right. right. OM. Right. We eat that sound. And so the Holy Trinity is represented in the knee, which is why I like to think of the knee as the arjuna of the body, mm -hmm. as the, the, the reluctant warrior. <laughs> starts out reluctant, but then becomes the equanimous warrior, mm -hmm. mediating the relationship between the earth and the sky. Right. And so what what happens to the knee in Virasana? So in Virasana, first I want to say that there, there are regional differences in knees. So in cultures where there's a lot of squatting, mm -hmm. 
uh, the cruciate ligaments. Show us. This is so. This model's really, really helpful. Oh, this it, is that. So you see, they're they're called cruciate because they cross. So that's on Can the you back see that of okay, your knee. Lizzie? Yeah, yeah, that's the back of your knee. Yeah, so I'm sorry, this is the posterior view of the knee. This is called the popliteal okay. uh, cavity. All right, so the cruciate ligaments mm -hmm. cross, mm -hmm. and they, they're they like the stops on a dresser drawer. Okay. If you pull a drawer out and it doesn't have those stops, well, it's a short trip to your big toe. Right. That's what the cruciate ligaments that do. They keep your your femur and your tibia together so they keep it so from they, hyper ex oh from from too they much keep bending. it from dropping off uh -huh. they're like the brakes okay okay so in cultures where there's a lot of squatting and kneeling mm -hmm. the cruciate ligaments tend to be more lax right because you're you, you're making that super bend motion all the time to go to the bathroom, yes. for example. But in Western societies where we sit in chairs, yeah. The okay, so in in Western societies, on average, most people sit nine hours a day. Okay, so range of motion is different, right? Based on activities of daily living. So if you Go, let's say you have a knee situation. Let's say you tore your ACL. Okay. And let's say you tear. Let me see if I can pop this apart without destroying the model. See, I always thought the ACL was that one on the side. Oh, no. So this is the medial collateral okay. ligament. Okay. This is on the medial aspect, the midline of the body. This is the medial collateral. It's mm -hmm. like a wall. Okay. This is the lateral collateral ligament. Okay. Okay. And then your cruciates. Let me see. Okay. Sorry. I got to stand. Sorry. Okay. So do you see that crop? This? Yes. Yes. This here? That's the anterior cruciate ligament. Oh. So it's in the joint, right? I never knew it's that. Yeah. It's between your femur and your tibia. Wow. Okay. Okay. So... Let's say you tear, you tear that ACL and you go to physical therapy. Uh, the full range of flexion mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is 135 degrees. If you visualize the circle, it's 135 degrees. Mm -hmm. If However, you look at common range of motion in societies where there's a lot of squatting and kneeling, their full range is 155. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So our tissues adapt right to our behavior. To, to our behavior. So let's say then you're in you're in class, you're in a yoga class, and the teacher says, "Okay, now it's time to come to Virasana." Mm -hmm. Well. You're looking in Virasana at about 155 degrees of flexion. Right. But for the majority of your students, 155 is a dream. Right. Right. So we need to support the joint. Because what's happening when folks simply sit on the heels it's too much strain right. on the cruciate ligaments, and it's too much strain for the patellofemoral joint. So where is the sensation that a student will feel or complain of when their ACL is being overstretched in Virasana, for example? They'll feel it in the joint. Uh-huh. Okay. And they'll feel it. This is the patellar tendon, mm -hmm. Okay which grows out of the quadriceps and attaches to this little bump on the center of your shin bone called the tibial tuberosity, they'll feel a lot of pressure. This will be so tight and right. uncomfortable. Right. Okay. And so most students need to be up on at least a block, a block under the sitting bones 
But honestly, the higher up they are, the better. So because this is not the way to improve your range of motion. Yeah, that's my I, question. Is like, is there an inherent... I've been in many yoga classes before, sometimes from the Iyengar system, for example, where a teacher will insist that virasana is some kind of goal that in and of itself has a magical power. Like I have the, the, the sensation or the, I've had the experience before that I really should be trying to get to virasana because I have heard this before from yeah. a teacher. It's very healthy for the knees. Yeah. Do you agree, so, Mary Richards, anatomy expert? No, I call Varasana knee torture pose. So is it? That's what that's what I call it, knee knee torture pose. And and of course, my view is colored because I've had four rounds of biologic reconstruction to my left knee. Uh, so I have a different personal experience of the pose, but I'm also hypermobile. Mm -hmm. So I have 152 degrees of flexion in my reconstructed knee. Wow. Okay, so I'm a super freak in terms of my range of motion. Um, but this business of Varasana being an elixir for your knees is simply not the reality for most students who sit in chairs all of the time. Right. And particularly for students who have ACL problems. Because if you look at sort of the classical alignment of Virasana, the heels sit to the outside mm -hmm. of the hips. Mm -hmm. And guess what's being tugged on all the time? The ACL. The ACL. Okay. And that does not stretch like a muscle does. Mm -hmm. So we are inherently compromising the integrity of the connective tissue within the joint. If this you want like it, no go. <laughs> so this is why a rolled blanket mm -hmm. or towel placed in the back pocket of the knee. Let's say that this mm -hmm. this person is in virasana. Mm -hmm. We want to take a rolled blanket and place it in this space. Yes, that's so to clear. facilitate ease in the relationship within the joint. Does uh, that make sense? That makes so much sense, Mary. I've seen that adjustment before and I've tried it, but I never could visualize what was going on in the knee joint. That's so helpful. So what, okay, so the, if you watch, watch this action. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, this is not a true anatomical model. Um, but you can see how uh, this the femur it roll it rolls on the tibia it yeah. glides yeah it rolls and it glides yeah and the knee to to improve your knee health you want to abide by something called the law of concave convex motion. Okay, but that's that's maybe we okay. want to just tease it. It's yeah, I, that's, that's where I'm going. And so basically what that means mm -hmm. is the concavity of your knee joint, your, your shin bone has these little wells, these depressions. By placing a blanket, a rolled up blanket in the back pocket mm -hmm. of your knee joint when you're in virasana, it facilitates the concave convex law. Fantastic. So it more evenly distributes compression mm -hmm. through the joint. Mm -hmm. And that's good because it doesn't overwork the tissues. That sounds really good. So in conclusion, my final question is, can you talk, can, can you tie it all in now to the knees energetically, philosophically, anatomically, with the state of affairs with our election and what our practice can offer us. So a lot of us have a feeling that our legs have been swiped out from beneath us. And we can empower ourselves by connecting to that feeling mm -hmm. of 
no longer being on solid ground. The world isn't the way perhaps we want it to be. Mm -hmm. Or thought that it was. Or thought that it was, exactly. And so I really, I taught a class this morning and I focused on um, knee mobilizations and hip mobilization. Mm -hmm. Because by moving the knees, by moving the hips, it's a reminder that even though we may not feel that we're on solid ground right now, mm -hmm. we still have the choice to move. Mm -hmm. And knees, especially because so many of us experience knee pain, motion is lotion. Mm -hmm. If we want to improve our bodily comfort, we need to use our bodies. Right. And so by taking ourselves down onto the mat and resting on the back body with our knees bent mm -hmm. and simply bringing the knees up to the chest one at a time, bringing the knees up and then straightening the leg, mm -hmm. these are all things that affirm to the body and to the mind through that connection with the knees, that we're still in relationship with the cosmic energy. And nothing can cut us off from prayer. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Mary. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Where can we find more from you on the internet? MaryRichardsYoga.com Okay, and I'm LizzieLassiter.com And if you want to... Stay in the loop about our upcoming digital anatomy training. Please visit experientialanatomy.yoga. Until yes. next time. Bye, Mary. Namaste. Namaste, Lizzie.